Today I want to show you how you can go from this to this or even this in real time while you're imaging. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about live stacking. If you're watching an astrophotography channel, you likely already know what stacking is. Stacking is where we take all of the pictures from an acquisition session and combine them to make a single photo. We do this in order to get a better signal to noise ratio, which gives us a much cleaner image with sharper details. Live stacking is where we do the stacking real time during our imaging session and is typically done for one of three reasons. One, so that we can watch the stack build as we capture photos in order to see if we appear to be on the right track with our imaging parameters. Two, we can use it at outreach events to show what we're looking at with much better detail. It's usually more interesting to people that don't understand the hobby. Think star parties and family and neighborhood get togethers. Or three, to create an image much more quickly and save a little time on the back end processing. I'm gonna focus on numbers one and two here because for me, I would rather go through my images before stacking to remove any obvious bad ones. With live stacking, you're gonna incorporate every image in your stack real time, whether it has a star trail, airplane, or noticeable blur. There are a few options available for live stacking, but the one I want to show you today is within Pix Insight by adding the easy processing suite created by Dark Archon. I prefer the way he built live stacking because not only can I integrate my calibration frames like bias, darks, and flats during the process, but I can even perform background extraction and stack individual mono channels, as well as a combined RGB image, all simultaneously. A couple things to remember before you get started. You don't have to use live stacking every night. I actually only use it on occasion, but it can be pretty handy at times. Your Pix Insight installation will need access to your images as they come in from the telescope and camera. You can either have the application running on the same machine or reach out for the information over your network. Pix Insight licensing allows you to install the application multiple times as long as you are the user. So feel free to install it and activate it wherever you need for this to work. If you're shooting mono and you wanna stack multiple channels, you'll need an image from each filter to configure each channel. Because of this, at the beginning of your session, you may wanna go ahead and take a single image of each filter type and then move on to your typical imaging sequence. Otherwise, you may need to go back throughout the evening and add in new stacks for the new channels as they show up. Towards the end of the video, I'll even show you how to save off your live stacks at the end of the night so you can add more data to it on another day. Okay, now that we have all of that out of the way, let's jump into configuration and see what this is all about. So while we're going to focus on the easy processing suites, easy live stack functionality, there are a number of other components within the processing suite, and you should definitely take a look at this. It has made my PixInsight processing a little bit easier and does save me some time on a number of different aspects of my processing. In order to get this to work, you're going to need to add a repository to PixInsight. I'll put this link and any other important ones in the comments. Let's go ahead and start Pix Insight. Once Pix Insight starts up, you should verify you have a current version. If you run into any issues with the Easy Processing Suite, you may need to update either the Processing Suite itself or Pix Insight. You can see I'm running the latest version of Pix Insight as of today. We'll go up to Resources and go to Updates, and then go to Manage Repositories. Within repositories, I have a number of entries here. The one we're looking for is Dark Archons. You can see this is where I've placed that URL. You would simply click Add and add it here. Once it's added, you should check for updates regularly. Go to Resources, Updates, Check for Updates. And if any updates are available, it will prompt you. Once installed, to find the suite, just go to Script and Easy Processing Suite. Here you'll see the number of tools that were installed. I use a number of these on a regular basis. We're gonna focus on Easy Live Stack. Okay, this is my first night imaging the Iris Nebula. So I'm gonna start Pix Insight, and once it's started, I'm going to look in my acquisition folder. Now you can either have the local acquisition folder or be moving these files over as they come in. You can see in my lights, I have a number of luminance images that have shown up and actually another one just rolled in. 
Once images are coming in, you can go to Script, Easy Processing Suite, and then Easy Live Stack. There is a help file that is very basic, but I'm going to talk you through this. First, we start by clicking Start New Live Stack. You need to identify the location of your light files that are coming in and select one of them. You can see that file shows up and it is uncalibrated. I have quite a few dust motes here and some vignetting as well. We can add our dark frames. I'm using 120 second frames. So for my camera, I'll go to my dark library and add my 120 second dark. I also have a flat that should work for this. So I'll go ahead and add a flat. If you have one, great. It'll certainly make it look better. I'm not gonna add a bias and there's nothing else for me to do on masters. I'm not gonna save any calibrated files along the way. Under processing, I am going to run automatic background extraction. So I'll check run ABE and leave the defaults. On the miscellaneous tab, I do wanna look at noise evaluation. So I'll select that. I'm going to wait for two seconds as images come in. However, I think the default here is 10 seconds, which seemed a little bit long for my demonstration. Once everything is set, we can simply go down to status and select start watching folder. It'll immediately go into the folder and find the files that are already present that match the filter we've currently configured. It's going to go through and apply calibration. You can see that my darks and flat was just applied. And it's going to go through all of the other files that were already there as well. Notice right now it says files in stack two, but down here we say two of five. So we know we have a few more in the folder that still need processing. As the files are individually processed, they will be added into this stack. You can see at this point, we actually don't have a lot of definition because we only have one or two images integrated. It should be noted that if there are several files to be integrated simultaneously, the on-screen version will only be updated once everything has been integrated. And there you go. Not too bad for only six frames so far, and this can only get better as we continue forward. You can see the current tab says it's monitoring and that PixInsight has a file watcher watching the folder. Now, as new files show up, they will instantly be detected and processed according to our configuration. Once processing is complete of an individual file, it will be integrated to the stack and the new stack will be displayed on screen. Here we can see our histogram and the noise evaluation showing our noise going down, which means our signal is going up. Now, as more files come in, they will also be processed. Here we see a new image came in, but is not moving into the stack because it is a red frame. Because the filter doesn't match, we need to add a new stack. So we'll go and create another one. Again, we'll find our light folder. We'll identify the red image that it should use as a base. And we'll open up our calibration options, which have been minimized. I'll go ahead and add my dark frame, a red flat if I have one, and then again, a bias if I did, but in this case, I don't. I'll process just like I did before, turning on ABE, but notice that noise evaluation is currently grayed out. I'll show you how to fix that. And we'll go ahead and start watching. As additional files come in, they will be added to either the luminance stack or red stack at this point. Now let's go back and talk about noise evaluation. I can just come into this stack and tell it to stop watching go back into miscellaneous and now I can turn on noise evaluation. Once that's done, I can restart the stack. Now as additional frames come in that are either luminance or red, we will add them to the appropriate stack and in both cases also perform noise evaluation. It should be noted that noise evaluation does add some processing time to each image. So you can either leave it on or turn it off. It really depends if you want the information. Okay, so more images are coming in. And in this case, it looks like a green image came in. So while they're landing in the folder, 
because we don't have green defined, we're going to have to go in and start a new stack. If we didn't start a new stack, it would be OK. It would continue to keep the files in the folder until we either created a green stack or it would just never process those images. You can see our green stack was configured the same way. They're now calibrated. And as more and more of those images come in, we'll continue to live stack them, pulling out more and more detail for that channel. Looks like several blue frames have come in, so we'll go ahead and add a blue stack. And now we've got four channels that we're monitoring, luminance, red, green, and blue. Now that we have all red, green, and blue available, we can actually go to live RGB stack and assign the filters to each appropriate channel. In my case, I'll turn off SCNR and we'll go ahead and start stacking RGB. Now this is gonna go ahead and create another tab for us, which will merge our RGB channels into a color image. So now I can look at each channel individually or a merged RGB image. Again, the RGB image and all of the other tabs will update as new images come in from any of those filters. It should be noted that I don't use live stacking to stack my production display images. I use this only for outreach events where I want to share detailed images during an acquisition session or so I can monitor my own acquisition sessions. Here we've come up on the end of my day one data collection and you can see I've got some pretty good data across all of my channels. So what if I want to continue adding data on subsequent days? Well, it's important that I save my live stacks. So what I'll do at the end of a session is click export all live stacks and then click continue. That's going to drop the live stack images on the desktop. It's critical at this point you save these images. In my case, I have four images, L, R, G, and B. Now each of these images must be saved as in EXIF format. If you save them in any other format, you're going to lose the data you need to continue your stack. So I'll just save these in my root live stack directory, but they can be anywhere you like. Now we'll just close up shop for the night. So here I am on my second day of acquisition and I can see I had data on June 15th and now I've already got data coming in on June 16th plus I have my four EXIF files from my previous session. Let's go ahead and see what's coming in this evening. Yep, I've already got some blue images coming in. Let's start up PixInsight and let's go back to that folder and let's load up all the previous night's EXIF files. Now that they're here in PixInsight, I can go to Scripts, Easy Processing Suite, and then Easy Live Stack. And instead of starting a new stack, I can just select a view, which will let me choose from the images I've opened in PixInsight. Now by opening one of these, you can see it's already loaded up the frame it already knows about the previous images in the stack. And it has all of my configuration, including my darks and flats, and even that ABE was configured. Now, one thing that does need to change is the monitoring folder because today's images are coming into a new folder. So we'll click here to change it to the new location. I'll make sure I'm in the right path. Select my light folder and I should be good to start watching. Because there are already files in this folder, they will immediately be picked up, processed against the calibration files, ABE will be run, they will be aligned, and they will be added to this stack to again, improve my SNR and provide me an updated view. I can repeat the process for all of the other channels as well. Remember, I need to change the monitoring folder for each individual channel. We'll wrap this up pretty quickly here.
and now I have all four channels, L, R, G, and B, all good to go, which means I can go back into my live RGB stack and reconfigure that as well to map the filters to the channels. And now I've got a live RGB stack as well. So again, I've basically picked up where I left off from day one, and anything that goes into this new folder will be added into the appropriate stacks so that I can monitor its progress.